and recovery and nutrition, looking for any advantage I could find to get back on track as quickly as possible. That's when I stumbled across a study about the Roman gladiators. The gladiator graveyard from Ephesus is the only one with a significant number of individuals buried there. Archaeologists recovered the remains of at least 68 gladiators. There have been more than 5,000 bones analyzed for the study. We found in the cross-section of the bone very high bone mineral density, which indicated intense training and high-quality diet to build up strong muscles and strong bones. This diet gave the gladiators the nickname Hordiari, which means beans and barley muncher. We know different food sources give different amounts of strontium in the bones. High strontium levels in vegetarians, low strontium levels in carnivores. If there is low strontium in the sample, the flame will stay blue. If there is high strontium levels, it will change from blue to red. The gladiators were predominantly vegetarian. This totally blew my mind. The gladiators were highly prized fighters who got the most advanced training and medical care in the Roman Empire. To think that the original professional fighters ate mainly plants went against everything I'd been taught about nutrition. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Superman. <laughs> James, does Superman eat meat? Yes. He does? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Could you tell us what sort of foods you eat at tea time? When you come home? Nearly the same as dinner, but um, egg and lamb chop. Do you think all the other children should eat those sort of foods? Yes. In order to get strong? Mm. Even in the UFC, this idea that meat makes you tough had become a focal point for one of the most anticipated fights in the history of the sport. Between Conor McGregor, the world champion in two different weight classes, and Nate Diaz, who accepted the fight with only 11 days' notice after McGregor's original opponent pulled out. McGregor was a big meat eater. It's a steaks every day for me. Steaks for breakfast, steaks for lunch, steaks for brunch, grass-fed, massaged, beef, all day long. Diaz was on a plant-based diet. Eat your vegetables. And McGregor had a field day with it. This man, let's eat, let's eat, can he fight? I'm a lion in there. Your little gazelle friends are going to be staring through the cage, looking at your carcass getting eaten alive. McGregor was feeding off a stereotype that was pretty much universal. <laughs> <laughs> you hit like a vegetarian. <laughs> I was curious to find out if there were any other elite athletes following a plant-based diet. Here we go! When Nate Diaz stepped into the cage to face Conor McGregor, the Vegas odds makers had Diaz as the four to one underdog. He caught him again with a right hook. And another left. And oh. again with the combination. Diaz trying to finish with a submission. He's got it. That's it. He's got the chance. Nate Diaz. He's out. He has got it. He's he he Diaz beats Conor McGregor. Oh my goodness. Nate <laughs> Diaz, he just shook up the world. How's that feel? Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> it's a bitter, bitter pill to swallow. Um, it was simply a battle of energy in there, and I, and he got the better of that, so. Nine days out from the fight, I started eating two steaks a day, and it just came back to bite me on the ass, you know? This was the greatest upset in UFC history. And it turned out Nate wasn't the only plant-based fighter out there. I stopped eating meat probably like around the end of 2012. I grew up not even knowing about half of these other vegetables. Asparagus to me just came.